So I do not believe in censorship at all. I think it would be completely inappropriate for any technology company to be put in that position. What we're really talking about here is the business model. And these companies have been so successful because they are able to command attention from the people who use their platforms. And they do that by amplifying content that is highly engaging. And it turns out in human nature that hate speech and disinformation and conspiracy theories are particularly engaging. They force us to look. It's part of our survival instinct. And that business model is the problem. It's the amplification of dangerous content that I would like to restrict, because that's simply a business model choice. In my mind, taking Trump off the platform is a desperation act. And I think at this point, probably very important. And I think you know, I commend Facebook for doing that. But I would point out that I don't think it solves the problem, that essentially they've allowed this kind of behavior to build for so long that it's tripped over into the real, real world. We saw it in the State House in Michigan last April, and then in Minneapolis and in uh, Louisville, Portland and Kenosha during the summer, and now at the U.S. Capitol. And we've this whole thing has become such a huge problem that we really need to rethink the role of Internet platforms in our society, as your previous guests were talking about. Right. And, and, you know, some critics could argue that it was coming at an opportunistic moment right after the big election ad campaigns and the loss of his office. In terms of that business model, though, Roger, how do we do we ever see that evolution? Do you expect um, to see a revival or more of a boycott from social advertisers in the coming days and weeks after yesterday's events? I think that's a really important question, and I don't know the answer. What I do think is inevitable at this point is that, and this is the really central thing for investors, is that regulation is definitely coming. I think you're going to see it in three areas. Safety, which really is about having accountability for products that people have to make sure that they make an effort to prevent harm. This is Section 230, and all that is a part of that problem. Then you're going to see regulation and privacy. We see California, and we also see Apple implementing really important privacy things. And then lastly, antitrust, where we're very far along. And yesterday, Lost in all of the news, Facebook announced that it will require WhatsApp users to agree to a merging <clears throat> of their WhatsApp and Facebook data. This is a challenge to antitrust regulators. It's basically pointing a middle finger at antitrust regulators saying, you know, we don't think you can regulate us. And I think that re antitrust regulators actually have an opportunity for felony cases because there's a price fixing case in digital advertising that starts out against Google. It was brought by the state of Texas and 10 other states, uh, but it, it involves Facebook as well. I think that once you start getting into the criminal realm, and you can do the same thing in securities law because of the Uber case, Uber has been pointing out that there's massive ad fraud that gives rise to revenue recognition violations, which, if they go on for many years, can also give rise to felony cases. And so I think from an investor's Roger. point of view, we need to pivot and just recognize the world's changing. Roger, it seems to me that yesterday perhaps was not so much about social media as it was about Donald Trump. I mean, uh, oh, yes, agreed. social agreed. media led to some of the attitudes that that were beneath the surface. But Donald Trump told those people to show up uh, in D.C. on January 6th, told them to march to the to the Capitol building. And so removing Donald Trump's social media account is not going to address the underlying factors uh, that that created this. And, you know, I think are likely to continue to exist beyond January 20th. What are John, the I policy agree. shifts, rule changes, structural changes that these social media companies can take to, to be more healthy for democracy? So, John, that is exactly the right point, because yesterday's event was organized on Facebook. And other Internet platforms were used to raise awareness of it. And it's all been out in plain sight for two months. I mean, the people who study disinformation, the people who study Internet platforms have been warning us. I mean, the notion that the Capitol Police were not prepared for what happened yesterday, I mean, that is that borders on criminal. And so, John, I think this is a really huge problem. And having a business model that profits from this exact kind of uh, creation of fantasy 
worlds where people live in alternate realities, that that's the conversation we have to have. And that's the one you, the, that all of us on this show have been having now for three and a half years as to where should the lines be? And it seems to me that that's getting clearer and clearer. And I believe Congress is going to get involved here, but the states are already involved in antitrust. They're already involved in privacy. And I would love to see Mark Zuckerberg and the leaders of Google and Twitter engage very transparently in trying to be part of the solution here. I think, you know, banning Trump for the duration of his term is a start, but it's a really small move in comparison to the scope of the problem. Because as you point out, there's nothing magic about January 20th. The people who stormed the Capitol yesterday, I mean, there are many more people like that in other cities. And we have to anticipate those kinds of things will continue to happen until there are consequences for that kind of behavior. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.